Yo, you're recording. Okay, cool. Um, welcome back to this video. My name is Emmett Enyart, and I got some exciting news in this video, and that is that I am now selling products that straight up benefit shed hunting and shed antlers. So, uh, to start things off, what I'm going to go over today is my new product, the Antler Anchor, which is a great wall display for shed antlers, and I'm going to demonstrate exactly how they work on the sheds off of the buck that I shot this year with my bow, and that buck is Blackjack. Was very fortunate to catch up with him this year. You'll obviously see that video at some point, but let's get into this video, which is directly related to the Antler Anchor. Let's go. So the antler anchor is a wall mount that displays shed antlers. It has a personal design of mine, and I make them here in my shop. And the reason I think that this is superior to what else is on the market as far as wall antler displays is the other ones in the market are one size fits all. They're very sloppy fitting, and they don't have a lot of room for adjustability on the antler. So basically with past designs and other stuff that's on the market with the things I didn't like about them, I figured why not go out of my way and try to make one of my own. And that's exactly what I've done. The antler anchor that I've designed, it's sleek, it's tight fitting to the wall. So basically there isn't much visibility to it on the wall. And then it's a two piece design. There's two pieces to it. Every antler anchor has a base and a hook. The base is where it has the legs that the antler sits on and then the hook is what um, holds the tine tight to the anchor. What you'll see on the base here is there's a female dovetail slot and then on the hook there's a male dovetail slot and basically it'll slide right there down through that dovetail slot to fit the antler up on the wall. So the antler anchor comes in a variety of colors, white, black, we can do them in right side, left side antler, whatever uh, your choice is. But then it comes in two different configurations after that, universal and custom. The difference between the two of them is the custom one is made specifically to measurements that you provide. So if you have a specific antler that you want to display on the wall, let's say that you shot a deer and you had the sheds off of it and you want to display the sheds next to the, the mount, well, a great option for you would be the custom one because as you can see, um, the custom one has the potential to have a smaller footprint than the universal one. The universal one, on the other hand, has a larger footprint because it has a larger dovetail slot, but it's able to fit a wider range of antlers. So that's the difference between the two configurations. Just remember though that the custom one requires three measurements on your end where the universal one's gonna be kind of just a general package where you can just pick the side and the color as, you know, as far as right or left side antler and the color and then you can order it and then it's gonna be able to fit 99% of the antlers. We're gonna go over exactly how to measure for a custom antler anchor and we're gonna do it with a shed off of the deer that I shot this year. This is a shed off the buck I call Blackjack. Because I know that I want this antler specifically to be up on the wall, I'm gonna do a custom anchor. And with the custom anchor, it requires three different measurements. It requires the M3 measurement, the M4 measurement, and then the G3 circumference. On every antler, the first tine or the brow tine is the G1, the next tine is gonna be the G2, and then the third tine is gonna be the G3. The M3 measurement is taken between the G2 and the G3 on the main beam. You can use a variety of different tape measures to do this. I recommend a flexible one, but you can also use one like this. This one isn't you know, the best one in the world, but it'll be good enough for this application. But basically you wanna take the mass measurement about halfway between the G2 and G3 of the main beam right here. And what you'll see there is about a measurement of four and one eighth to four and two eighths, which would be four and a quarter. What I'm gonna recommend is when you're doing these measurements, always round up for the purpose of just giving yourself a little bit of a factor of safety. The next measurement we're gonna do is the M4 measurement, which is gonna be between the G3 tine and the G4 tine. So I'll take, go about halfway between here on the main beam, wrap the tape measure around, and what I see here is roughly a four inch measurement. So I got 4.25 here and four there. And then the last measurement that you have to take for the custom antler anchor is the G3 circumference, which is basically gonna be where the main beam intersects the G3. You look at the top of the main beam here and you run it across the G3. About right here is where that main beam, the top of the main beam would intersect that G3. So then you go about half an inch above there and we're gonna take the circumference of the actual G3 tine itself, right here. When you do this measurement, you wanna make sure that you don't crease the tape measure. 
And so as I do it right here, I see my measurement is about, I'm gonna try to move my finger here so you guys can see it. My measurement was between uh, two and seven eighths and three inches. So I would put three inches on line. So basically my measurements were 4.254. And then for the G3 circumference, I had three inches. I would put those three measurements in online. And then when I go to order it, what happens is that order would come to me. And then I've got some formulas that I use to determine what size antler anchor base you need and what size antler anchor hook you need. And then I'd have them custom made. Thankfully, I come prepared and I've actually already made the custom base and the custom hook for this specific antler. So I'll show you exactly how to install that. Okay, so when you order an antler anchor, what you'll receive is you'll receive an antler anchor base, an antler anchor hook, and you'll also receive two installation screws. That's what will be provided to you. What you will need is you'll need a tape measure and a pencil, a Phillips head screwdriver, a level, and a drill with a 332nd drill bit. All right, so what you've done is you've marked out exactly where you want your antler anchor hung with your pencil and your tape measure. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your drill bit with the 332nd bit, and you're gonna drill the first hole. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your antler anchor base, just the base itself, and you're gonna take one of the screws and you're gonna put it in that hole. You're not gonna get it super tight, but you're gonna get it tight enough that it sits flush with the wall, but you can still move it side to side. Then you're gonna to wanna to take the level here, set it flush against the side of the anchor, and you're gonna make it level. And then what you can do is you can do a number of different things here at this point. What I like to do is I like to take the Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna hold this anchor with pressure so it doesn't move. I'm gonna take the uh, Phillips head screwdriver and I'm gonna set it in the middle of that hole that hasn't been drilled. And I'm gonna supply some pressure right there. And it's a, what it's done now is it's made a little bit of an indent. So now what I like to do is I like to take the anchor and slide it out of the way. And I'll put the drill right there where the mark was. Now we have our second hole drilled. So then I'll take the second screw I'll slide the anchor back into place. And it's pretty self-explanatory here. We've got the antler anchor base installed. We're gonna take the antler we wanna display. We're gonna put it so the G3 tine is close to that female dovetail slot. And then I'm gonna take this hook right here and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna wrap it around the G3 tine, and I'm gonna take that male dovetail slot and slide it right into the female slot. I'm just gonna press down on it until it's got it about perpendicular or just a little bit above. When I say perpendicular, I'm talking about this hook. It should be perpendicular with the tine or just a little bit up. Obviously, if this was a left side antler, it'd be on the other side, but that's fitting perfectly, and that's the custom fit. So if I wanted to, to, to detach the antler from the antler anchor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the antler, push the tine back up against the wall so that weight and tension that was on the hook is now relieved. I'm gonna take my other hand, I'm gonna get as close as I can to the hook, and I'm gonna apply upward force to pull it out. And now, the antler's back in my hand and I can show it off to all my friends. Once everybody goes home, I can put it back up for a great display, just like before. Just gonna slide it right down in like that. And there you go. So we went over the custom anchor. What I wanna show you now is the universal anchor. This is like the type of box that it would come in. The universal one is gonna have the biggest footprint possible. It's got the largest dovetail slot. That way that the hook can adjust up and down for a wide range of antlers. Then also with the universal antler anchor, it comes with three hooks instead of one. These are all three general size hooks that, you know, between the three of them, then one of them will work for the antler that you're trying to display. And then um, it comes with two installation hooks. I've got the universal base here installed. So I can test out each of the different hooks. So this is the biggest hook that the universal one's gonna come with. And you see how it doesn't really display that well. It's, got, it's kind of loose, it's sloppy. That's the first hook. We're gonna try the second hook. This one might fit a little bit better. And it does. It fits it a little bit tighter. It's not the best, but it fits it a little bit tighter. So we're gonna try the third hook. 
And now the third hook should be absolutely perfect. Which it is. Now the antler sits a lot more proud. When you look at it from the side, it sits here right up next to it flush. And that absolutely looks great on the wall. But as you can notice on this anchor, you'll see how there's a little bit more real estate as far as what you can see on the wall. It's more visible than what the custom one is. So the universal one's nice because it can fit a wide variety of antlers. For example, just with the ones I've got here, I got one of Blackjack Sheds from uh, a couple years earlier. Well, the universal one works for him too. Okay? Oh, okay, I don't want to display this one anymore. I got something bigger I want to display. I want to display Mondo. You can see how his tine's thicker. He's really bladed here on his G3. That's definitely not um, normal, so he's going to have some added... Uh, unusual things going on here but the universal hook is still capable of displaying mondo so i was just able to fit three completely different sized antlers with three completely different characteristics even though this score smaller than blackjack's antler over there the mass on this tine is ridiculous just remember that antlers that have kickers coming off their G2 or their G3 perpendicular to their tine are likely not going to be able to be displayed. There are a couple I have that are perpendicular to the G2 tine that are able to display with antler anchors. This is the only one I could find that isn't able to be um, displayed. But the, re the way you'll be able to know is you take that G3 and main beam intersection point, you go to place it up against the wall flush, and I can't put it flush because that kicker is stopping it. Or you can order them, if you can order them on my website, you'll find a link to my website in the description below. And I want to thank you for your time and watching this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to hit them up in the comments below. You can always contact me on some of my other social media accounts or use the contact me form on my website. I think this will help a lot of shed hunters out here. Um, and I'm excited to see how these work out for you guys. So.